I've done this twice before. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> I, I've been to this uh, subject matter twice before, and uh, both times uh, someone had fought it. So I like to have it as a, as a, a, a be able to show other people. So I'm going to do it again. So, and each time it got a little better. So I don't I don't want to make too much promises here. So. Uh, but anyways, uh, what I, what I really like about it, it's it's got a, a simple color palette. Um, this is a good example of uh, um, when you have cool light, uh, a light through the window that's not really a bright sun. So when you the, the light is gonna, so when I paint it, all the lights are gonna be cool, and then the shadows is gonna be warmer. That's what happens with the lighting. If it's a, if it was a sunny day, it would be just reverse. All the light would be warm. Shadows would be cool, so that all, always gives it a different look that way. Um, and of course, I, I didn't put too many colors out here, so um, let's see what else can I say about it. But, well, the paper I'm uh, this is a, a 140 pound um, cold press, I believe. Um, sometimes I forget what I'm using sometimes because I just go through all my piles of paper and I just pull out and start cutting. And then once they're all cut up, I sometimes forget what they are. So, so anyways, I, um, I'm going to use uh, some Daniel Smith colors that I discovered I've been using for several years now. It's very granulated colors. So I'm going to use mostly those on this. So uh, mostly because there's the colors I see on here that worked out pretty good. So. So anyways, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use the best colors. I'm gonna use all my old brushes that I've had for years and years and years. And got it. so I'm, I'm ready to paint. Any, any questions before I get started? Okay. So I will try to explain everything, all the steps I'm gonna do. Uh, like any other uh, picture, I'm gonna start with uh, the lightest areas and kind of keep adding to that. Uh, well, I hate to say no, but I'll try. <laughs> Pardon? Yes, I see that. This is it's very nice. Okay. Okay. I don't think I'm going to need my glasses right away. So, so a lot. Some of the light areas I'm going to just. Down here, I'm just going to put a little bit of, of water just along the edges. Okay. I should note that we also have the closed captioning on. If you can't read it, there's closed captioning on the bottom. There you go. Can you read that better? Than you? Okay. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm gonna just take some. Uh, this is the uh, what do I? Uh, I like to say it in French, la pi lazul. It's uh, it's just kind of an old-fashioned uh, ultramarine color. So I'm just gonna put some on there. Let me see. I want to get a little bit. Oh yeah. Just in that one little spot there, and then I'm just gonna flash it off. Okay. Come back and we'll, uh, later. Then I'm just gonna very lightly put a washes over this whole thing like this. It will dry fairly, fairly light. Where I don't, where I want to really keep the whites of the paper, of course, I'm gonna paint around that. So. So that's how we're going to start this. And I like to start at the bottom of my pictures because I like to have the, the colors, once I put them on top of each other, I could have them like come down into each other. A lot of times I have this, uh, and if I, the more I want to do it, the more I can I have a drafting table at home where I can have this at different levels. So, okay. My other main color is called Tiger's Eye. It's kind of the same kind of color, except it's warm, a little bit warmer to, to it. So they look good in combination. And just put a little bit right there. 
And I think I'll come from this direction here. That's good. And it'll, it'll, it'll drip down there. Okay. So every time I'm doing an area, I try to do as much in that area as I can. I can see this paper already since it's I wet it, it's already starting to waver a little bit. So I'm gonna to try to stay away from wetting the paper, I think. Okay. All right, so over here. It's like to just flash the color on there and it'll drip down into that other color. Up here where there's more shadow, I'm just gonna put some there, mix these two together. I know this is gonna be a harder edge later, so I'm gonna do it right now. Go right through that there like that. A little lighter, let that come down. I don't want that to be too hard, so I'm just gonna. I've never, I've never painted with the, the sweet sound of a <laughs> cooing in the background. It's a lot different than my normal rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice if I was painting like a little baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's enough for that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Over here. Cool it down. I like to do is work all around the picture and get everything. Um, once I get something on the whole painting, then I can really start, start getting more into it and really defining different areas. There's a few basic things I have to get. Like the only problem with this color is that it doesn't last long. It's, it's, it seems very thin. So you just take a little bit and you wash it on there. Not only just dry really light, it disappears off my palette very quickly. Very quickly. Is it a, a brownish kind of a yellow? Sort of? The, the tiger's eye is. Yeah, yeah. brownish, okay. The uh, lapis lazuli yes, in English mm -hmm. is uh, it's like the it's very similar, yeah. Like the yeah. So you would never get like a, it would be very hard to get a, deep blue sky with that so yeah i usually paint it when i want to do something that's light and cool like shadows and white shirts things like that so okay so i'm just gonna kind of just what i'm gonna do on this side where the window is the other good thing about these colors they really come off, pull off very, very easily. So where I know it's gonna be light, I can just come back later and do it. Okay, there's a lot. We have a question, I hope you don't mind me interrupting you. We have a question from the uh, online audience. Uh -oh. Ken, um, do you wanna take a question or do you wanna? Sure, can I hear them? And they they type it in, oh, in okay. on the chat. Has he used any masking fluid to retain the whites? No, not because different <laughs> <laughs> opinion. It sounded kind of like no. <laughs> uh, the answer on this one is no. I haven't. I I have on the other ones for, but in general, I don't like using masking fluid because I always spend so much time 
trying to get rid of it after I use it. Okay. So I know up here, if I was to use it, it would be right uh, in there. Right in there. So I know all this little edge over here is. Gonna put a little bit in there. And now I'm just I want to make sure this side right here. This is all the dryer, the paper. So I want this edge right here to be nice and white, nice and white. Okay. Okay. I don't really have that warm color there. That's fine. I'll come back in later. Now I'm just going to put a little more of this. Go. And then since uh, knowing that later I'm going to have, you see, this will be cool right there. Paint around her hands there. Once I get, think it's gonna, there we go. That should be good. Okay. Now, as I just let that sit for a while, a lot of times I'll just take my board and just let everything drip more, even more so. I don't know if you can still see it. Yeah, yeah. Still see it. Mm -hmm. Just. And then when I see areas that I like, then I'll just leave it. If not, I can just get rid of it later. So as it'll sit, I don't want that hard edge there and pull a little bit off of that. Okay. Just gonna drop a little bit of warmth here. All right. Be good. Okay. Now I'm going to make your figure a little bit. Get a basic wash on here. This is a more, a little more of a. I, my main idea here is to keep my whites on that side over there. Okay. I keep this very light wash. I can see now I've forgotten to do my feet, but I'll come back to those. I'll come back to her feet. Good. 
Okay, for up here, I know these colors will come off very easily up there. So if I can, I'm gonna kind of paint around the, the kind of the rim light, but everything else I'm just gonna kind of paint over. Up here, anyways. Kind of overlap a little bit there. These, I think it's kind of some warm and cool going on. Mm -hmm. What's well, really interesting, you're using basically two colors. Yes. Wow. Yeah. What's the name of the blue? Lapis lazuli. Like the uh, storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Somehow I touched. I touched my. Uh, I touched my uh, real ultramarine so you can see the difference there. That's what I'll mix with that other color to get a dark, my darks. So right now, I'm gonna kind of come up into her, her skin tones there. There's this other color I have, it's called Sedona Genuine. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I like burnt sienna, but it's a Daniel Smith color. So I should use a bigger brush, I think. Tell everybody to use a bigger brush, so I better do it too. Okay. So I'm just gonna just drop it in. Since I just wet up there, I'm just gonna. I'm not really concerned if it comes out of the lines or anything, because I want all these colors to kind of come together. I'll just kind of stay away from the left side of her face like that. Just paint right over the blue that I'd already put there. Okay, there we go. I'm waiting just for the right time to. That'll be good. And I'm just going to put a little more color right there because I had I had these two areas right there, so I'm going to let these work together a little bit. Just drop some in there like that. Now I think it's time. Right, very de delicately, I'm afraid to touch it there. I'm just gonna drop in just a little, little bit of warmth. And I wanna do it while it's wet because it's kind of, you can kind of see through her dress there. Just keep it very light. That much. All it takes is just a little, there's just a couple little areas just to give a hint of what's there. Like that. Okay. Now that I did that, I'm just gonna put some down here. Also, this is still wet down here, still wet. Oh, can you speak up, sir? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's a process. It's a way to put it's emerging. Yeah, that's the whole idea. Like a magic trick. <laughs> right. 
There was one, right? So as you can see, like you can see these colors, uh, like normally you say, oh, well, you don't want that brown coming into there, but that's okay. I, it just gives it that watercolor look to it. So mm -hmm. just leave that, we'll leave that. And I can leave that all because that's all going to be painted in a shadow. So and my main concern is more around her there. Doing this. Okay. How long did it take you to do the drawing? Oh, it does take long to do the drawing. Not too long. Um, it probably been about an hour and a half on it. Should be good. I like these little things. There's just a little bit of color right down there, just to give it a little hint. Now that I put that right down there, I'll be able to use it. Maybe just a little bit hint of it in another place. It's really just like an accent color. Okay. You see where the water, you see where the folds of the paper mm -hmm. created a little canal mm -hmm. and the water went right through my shadows down here. <laughs> you can see that right there. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. I wish it didn't do it, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. So now as, as everything settles, I'm going to, I'm just going to add a little bit of do something over here. Just add something. I want to do it while it's still wet so it still works together. Just want to keep it gray. I'm just putting like a very light wash of ultramarine over what I've already done. I get the sound no matter what. <laughs> that doesn't help any. <laughs> okay. That there. There's a little bit of something here. Just, a lot of people have heard that. Uh, I'm sure they've heard the expression that salt watercolor is mostly tiny. Mm -hmm. So, as I'm looking at my painting as a whole, I, I came down here because it was the right time to do this. So that's why I did it. All right. And as it settles, I like to take, I got like a whole lot of pigment on my, on my brush. So little areas that are like great in here, I just, since there's much more pigment on my brush, it, it won't, bleed out as much, won't create any balloons or anything, but I didn't get very straight on that line. Yeah. Back to that. All right, just want to be just a little bit darker right here. Just a little more emphasis for her dress. Same thing with these little tiles that come down. Just want to do it just a little bit, not a lot. There's like, like surfing down here. Curves. This one got I like that. Fix that. It just show you how easy that comes off. I'm just gonna do it one little spot, maybe right here. This is gonna be the light coming through the window. Because it's still pretty wet, right? 
that why it comes off so it, it'll it'll come off dry too yeah yeah if you do it too soon then the the the, the paint will come back into it mm -hmm. so the ideal time it really depends on if you want a really soft edge or you want a really sharp edge mm -hmm. yeah that being said i want this top part let's see my line I, I don't want to pull off all the way to the top i want to keep that so i don't want to pull off until i get about right here i will just do it very lightly so i don't want it to be solid solid white edges <clears throat> as it gets down to the bottom like over here i can see this i didn't they see that before i think i wasn't using my glass or whatever but it's got some kind of a, something you can see outside let's leave that there Ken, you were starting to say when the ideal time is to lift lift and you your thought. yeah it's it's right the the best time is like right you still see like a little sheen on your paper yeah yeah and then the more pigment you have on there the easier it'll come off some colors and uh, don't come off nearly as easy as some other ones okay. all right at this point i need to well, this is fairly light down here i'll do that it is that's how hard i pull or push if i just do it very lightly i can just not get quite as much and yeah. see so I think at this point I want to get get that off. The sooner you can get anything that doesn't need to be white off the thing, it's easier to tell what you need in other places. So let me make sure it's the right one. Yeah, these are quite expensive too, by the way. <laughs> so, I it's the it's the lapis color. Yeah. Oh. So I always buy like four at a time. Yeah. Forget I have these wet things in my hand. Okay. On this side, I'm gonna. The tiger's eye. I'll paint over everything with this. I had stopped here because there's a natural stopping point there. I'm just gonna go over the whole thing like this. I did not wet it. I'm just looking at this value that's, mm -hmm. it's always the, the middle values that I paint with to start. Okay. Get a little cooler as I go down here, just a little bit. See where I want to stop here. Very basically, just going to kind of connect these, get a little warmer right there. As this uh, clock, grandfather clock, gets a little closer down here, I'm get a little warmer with my color. Cool on this side. Okay. 
I have to remember the next time I do this picture to make sure I have 300 pound paper, not to worry about some things here. Shadow, go across, come on. There we go. But I don't want that to be too much there. There we go. It's really dripping. I'll let that drip. It'll be kind of like a, maybe it'll look like a reflection of the clock coming down. Okay, so now it's all pretty much covered. So now we can kind of, I'm just gonna come and add, add to areas. What kind of tray are you using? It's like a butcher's tray. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like porcelain? Yeah, porcelain butcher's tray. That's what we all learned. To, that's what we were told in the American Academy. So that's what we all got. <laughs> but for, for years, I, I tried to replace mine and I couldn't find it. But finally, I could find them again. So, so I bought two. All right. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna use this. Let's just add a little bit of this warm color right here. There's kind of like a little pattern there. Let's put some of there. There. I'm not worried about looking for my lightest lights at all right now because I know I can pull them out. And it's going to be a lot easier to do it when it's dry, drier, because my paper is kind of rolling. So, yeah. Let me get that dark on this side over here. Okay. Now, in that, I think in this clock, that would be a good, good place to repeat that little green I had down there and just drop some in there. There you go. And in this little painting up here, I think. Which really the only reason I leave that there is because it gives a it surrounds the, her hands, so it's going to help define the hands. I'm also waiting to do the darkest darks too, so they'll stay better. So like all this part down here is pretty much done. There's not a lot more to do in her dress. I then then I see where I do want to do some. Okay. As I'm uh, working around this, I, I'm getting very close to having to put my reading glasses on. <laughs> yeah. Because the reason is because I, I can still see my pencil lines underneath all my color, but it's easier to see when I got those glasses on. Yeah. I don't want to get too dark on this part. Let's see. Just enough right there. That's too much. Bring it down there. Oh, that's enough. Okay. Here. And this side, just keep all this in the middle. Every time I make a stroke, I want to make sure it's as 
simple and clean and something that I can just do one time and leave it. it always gives much more of a freshness to it. Okay. okay, I'm going to make up a nice dark color here. It's time to find my really nice dark someplace. So I just I just took my tiger's eye and mixed some ultramarine blue in there. Just really want a dark brown. I think I'll just start right up. I'm afraid to touch that. Okay. I'm gonna put some right here. And that should be that there. Now we've had a question from the uh, the, the uh, uh, virtual audience. They wanted to know what green you are using. What's the color of green for her hands and various other little spots of green that you put in? It's called Sleeping Beauty. Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but it's really just a really nice, pretty turquoise green. Yeah. Blue. It's just a kind of very a blue green color. Yeah. I only want to bring this right down to where her hand is there. <coughs> Up there. Up there. Then. I think I went in the wrong place for that. And we usually take about a 10 minute break somewhere in the middle that works for the artist. So is there a certain time that you need to have drying or anything? Um, you can let us know when a break would be. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna wonder if you still did that. Gives you a chance to settle your nerves. My nerves? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he gets to go to the snack table for it. Come on. Okay. I need to settle my nerves. I just need to have a dry spot to put my hand. <laughs> That's what I need. All right, this is like, I don't know, I'm just gonna just put something in there and let it settle there. That's enough for that. Okay. Let me put some, make, put some of this while I got this all mixed up. All right. Won't wait too long for this. On there, there's only a couple of things I want to paint around. There's a little ball that hangs down there. But I think I'll just pull that out a little bit. The rest is all kind of dark, so just get some get some pigment on there. There we go. Is the painting still there? Oh yeah. Let that set a little bit. Some of this 
use this green as in some lighter areas in that where I see it, I'll make it lighter, pull it out a little bit lighter. And it's just a, this value up here. Now all that should be a little, have a little more, that's gonna be darker. So very put some boy I got a nice ridge there and, uh, I don't want this clock to be too too visible so I'm just gonna take this color and I'm just gonna paint right into what I already did and I'll get a soft edge and it won't be so dark mm -hmm. Yeah. There we go. I want to stop. Where do I want to stop it? Right there. There we go. It's little rivers. <laughs> what I don't want is that to come into your hand there. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna bring this little some little of my blue right into her hair here. Um, very lightest part I'll leave by itself. More up there. But it'll stay and not go into your hand there. Go. Now this area needs a little bit of a value there. Okay. I think, uh, let's, let's leave that there. Okay, I, I think that was a good time to take a break. Okay, let's take about a break. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, is it still like... having cookies and coffee I, I i just wanted to do there's a lot involved in uh doing this last stage or these other stages so i went ahead the what's i did differently since it was your last i pulled out for these windows you can see that i did a little bit on the, the floor here pulled out a little bit there and i wanted to do um just around her arms just to get that like I would just come in like this and just pull out that color, pull out that color there. And sometimes it's very delicate. I thought it would, I wanted to do it um, because 
it's a lot of like close up busy work and it's not exciting to to actually watch do so yeah but yeah so i just kind of go around let me see i want to make this like just a little bit lighter over there uh, not a whole lot just enough to give that illusion so is the paper um, like glossy or is it kind of matte at this point? Now there's some areas where, like I showed you where it starts, it was dripping, where it ends up is stays wet the longest. Okay. And then one thing you want, I always try to avoid is like right at the end, um, once it's find a place to settle, I just kind of hold it back that way. As you can see, like right here, in these dark areas there, right. the paint will settle there and sometimes it gets kind of chalky and thick and stuff. So I just kind of like go backwards a little bit and just, then once I get, once you got it to where you want to look, then you just lay it flat, it'll stay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think I've gotten it enough to where, uh, okay, that, uh, let me just quickly do her little her shoes down here it's all kind of one the whole idea is i put down the like a main main wash like that and then either to finish it to make it look finished i either pull off some one side or the other for the light or add darks so on these, I can do, I can do both. Okay. Sharpen that up there. Get my small brush. Okay. I'm just going to take my blue. Like here in your leg. Okay. And stay. Want that, but it'll easily come off. There we go. So come here. Here's my shadow. <coughs> I'll just take the same color I used originally. And then I will just finish that area off right like that and that's done okay. okay same thing on this other one i can just make just a little bit of shadow right there wherever it's dark take some more color and i'm just going to touch it just touch it and let these two colors move together. <clears throat> and then later, just very light wash, just to give it one side or the other, give it a little form. There we go. And while I'm down here, I can see, so I don't want to do a lot of this. It's just like detail. You see, I'm just going to put just a little bit here so you can see kind of these little folds that are in this her dress here. I think they call it this particular thing. I don't remember. I should know. Over here, this floor is actually a little darker than her dress. But that's okay. I'll just leave that. Like if I really wanted to really wanted to finish this off when I would do a real painting, then you just kind of come in and just kind of do just touch it just enough, give the illusion of detail. <clears throat> I've had, I don't know, I have had many times people come up and uh, up to me and said, Oh, your your paintings are so detailed. I just I just cringe when they say that <laughs> because I spend so much time 
trying to not make it look detailed. <laughs> but that, but the, but then at the same time, it's it's it works because um, because it, you want them to look at oh, there's so much detail. But when there really isn't, it's just illusion. Like if you have a whole big pattern and stuff, all you got to do is show it it just a few little areas, and the rest just kind of let it go off. And they'll, your eye will automatically look at that detail and just assume everything else just like that. So you only got to only put detail in certain areas. It works. So, yeah. Yeah, her dress is good. I don't have any do more for that. So let me see as I move up. So at this point, I'm, she is certainly the center of interest. So at this point, when I look at my painting, um, I'm only going to do things that are going to make improve that center of interest. So I'm, and I did this because it comes right over to here and just gives it a, makes that look even lighter. Okay. This, yeah, I don't have to do a lot. And like, there's a little bit of light right there. See how that comes off. That's enough. I see all these little marks I made. I can, I would come around and just, a lot of my paintings have these little dots in them, like these little emphasis areas. And people wonder, oh, well, how do you do that? Now, this is how I do it. <laughs> I just take a clean brush and I know that the colors I put down there will come off very easily. So it works. Over here, this hmm. Can't seem here, I'm going to soften this. Can't seem to mute them. <laughs> I find out who it is. Uh, uh, so, uh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Just want to bury that edge. Like that. Like that. I'm working my way up to her arms and her face here. I'm going to do that last. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to put a little. I'm going to, that a little darker there. Let's show a little more. Go. Okay. I think I'll do this arm first because it's on that side. That's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think I could put my arm down here. That's what I've been waiting. So to finish this side, all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take just like I did the other part. I'm just gonna put another wash of this my first color, Sedona. Is that a really small brush? Is it bigger? What like a size two it's, or three? Or it's like a three, three, three or four. They're getting smaller and smaller. The way I paint my my flats start turning into rounds, my rounds start turning into flats. So, yeah. Okay. So like on her arm up there, I'm gonna introduce just a little bit of I'm putting a little more violet in here. Just a little bit, just for its shadow. So I'm just where I want to leave it. I'm just going to take this violet color. Normally, I would want to do this part of it before I, I pull out that color. And give it there. But then up here, just put a little slash there. Drop a little bit more color in there. There we go. That's pretty much done. There. I'm 
I'm quite sloppy. <laughs> Let me I've got her fingers. My lightest color is still there. My original wash is my lightest color. So right now all I gotta do is very simply put in another wash and it, it will suffice for my dark shadow. See over here, you got way too dark this there. Sometimes you get get lucky and these drips go right in the right spot. <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna come to the other side. I'll do the violet first. Up there. And I paint around this little this lightest part under her elbow there. My brush is sticking to my hand. I had so much paint there. <laughs> okay. Oh, just, I got enough there. Cool this down there. Okay. I went all around her arms and hands. Let's see, I put them <clears throat> just now. I always want to paint to the uh, oh boy, I just felt my back. <clears throat> no, no, it's, it's <clears throat> just the way I was turning. But when I when you when I do a wash, like I came down here and I immediately want to do the next one. Anytime I'm into a shadow area, I want those whatever I'm doing to touch, touch each other. <coughs> See where her, okay, her hair comes over here. Do you need a chair or a stool? Um, no, I'm fine. Do you normally paint standing or sitting? Oh, I usually stand. Yeah, but that's a roll <coughs> size. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'll just, I'll adjust. <laughs> I will adjust. What were you saying about the shadow, about it touching each other? Well, whenever you have uh, like two shadows that come together, I mean, it's the same shadow, but it's like you see, well, one looks lighter than the other. You don't want to paint one, leave it. You want to avoid the hard edge. Oh, okay. Okay. So, like when he came down to her arm, as you see, I don't see it, but if you can see it, but that blue I just put over her dress and that brown are blended uh -huh. together. Okay. And you really can't see an edge anymore. But there's an illusion of an edge. Yeah. But that's what you want to get to. All right. And then on the colors of the shadows, the, for instance, the shadow on the floor or the shadow on the arms, what determines the color of the shadow? Is it just everything around it? All right, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not exactly the, the sure. The color that you use for the shadow. Uh, up on uh, her, what I'm doing now? There and also under her feet or by her feet there, that shadow. Oh, those, are, I just determined that I was going to use those two colors. It's mostly you get the right right value. Value. Yeah. That's, yeah, the color isn't as important as the value. Okay. All right, so under her neck here, it's all in shadow, so I'm going to paint all over it all over the whole thing except right there it's a little lighter 
So I'm just gonna wanna make sure I get enough enough pigment in there so it stays dark. Like that. There we go. I still have my nice dark right over here. Okay. The hair over here. And I want to do this now because I have this here. So hopefully I'll just get this dark right about there. Mm -hmm. And then it'll have a nice soft edge. Okay. Right up to there. Now, just that once I get that nice dark in there, it makes everything come out a little more, all right? Now on the top of her head, right up there, it's a little warmer. So I'm just gonna put the, my little brown right on the top there, all around the edge. Because as it comes closer to the light, it's gonna get a little lighter value. Okay, everything just, and a nice flat washes with enough pigment in there. Keep that darker there. This is why I have a detailed drawing. Still see all this. Okay. That part of her hair is done. Over here, it's a little lighter. Let's keep it more gray. Put a little of that green in there too. Put a little of that in the light hair areas of her hair over here. Got little scamp stole. Just a dab of that green. I go back to my dark. It has a nice a lot of pigment in there. In there. Just do her hair. Just a few swashes. This little dark right, right here, ear there. Okay, now her face. Carefully paint around that light area where on her nose there. So I want to keep that lighting. Yeah, it's very important. All my students see I'm painting right over the eyes. Okay. And let's... Now then everything else is gonna have a wash over it. Well. You pretty much exclusively do figures, and yeah. Mm -hmm. So yesterday I painted the flowers. Oh, <laughs> at the workshop, right? Yeah. 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 All right. So I just want to very hope I'm not blocking anybody, but I'm just I want it as simple as possible. 
you get some just taking like a, a cool value of blue and violet and just putting it where her eyes would be. I've done enough of a drawing underneath so I can still see it. <laughs> so I just want it very, very lightly put in there. This got some reflected light coming underneath. Some over there. Everything's about simplifying it. Simple. Ken, could you pick up the painting and bring it closer to the camera for a second so we can see what you just did? What camera? The one over here. This one? Oh, yeah. yeah. You're on that one. Okay. Oh, that good? Wow. Oh. Wow. Good, I'm glad it's better. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, now I'm just going to just do the same thing with her lips, but I'm using the same color, the same brown, Sedona color for her lips. I want to get to, yeah. Okay, as that dark, as this uh, um, dark area get dries, it gets a little lighter. So I'm gonna just beef up just a little bit right inside the darker sides. Just enough. This side needs some right there. Okay. Now up here, this needs to be darkened. Because I Because the whole reason is there to help bring out the hand, so it needs to be darker to do that. Do I have a question? No, no questions. Log on silence on live. Fascinating. Okay. Is that Daniel Smith Violet have a special name? Or is it just Violet? The Violet? Just is it just violet? Oh, the violet head, that's a winter new one. Oh, was a winter new one? Yeah. Oh. That one is. I do have one. The one they sent me is like it's kind of a weird color. It's like it's not really a nice violet, so I don't really use it. I kind of want to straighten this out a little bit. This side I got too wide. This this thing should be really really here. Oh, that paper flatten out when it dries. Yes, yes, it will finally dry. And then when I mean not not exactly completely. What I do is uh, um, when I'm pretty sure the painting is completely done. Uh, and I'm ready to phot phot photograph it for a show or whatever. Spray the back of it and then put the all the, the flat thing, put all the books on there. Yeah, and then it's nice and flat. And then they look really good. <laughs> and they're much better that way. You ever use a hair dryer to, to push the drying? Never. Although I wish I had one today. <laughs> okay. So now. I'm just gonna, that's wet. I can stab a little bit of something up there. <laughs> there we go, that's good. Okay. Now I can, I can look at stuff, what I wanna do. I am going to do just kind of warm this area up a little bit and it'll bring her arm out more. 
but I just want it to fade off. And not too much. Because I want it to match that side of it. So is this better than all the other times you've done it today? <laughs> this is the very best one. Um, it is. Yeah, 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 I think so. I think so. Once I got her, now as I see, I got to do something. Sorry. <laughs> uh, it was supposed to be a little more, but it's pretty dark already underneath her. What was that turquoisey type color you just used? Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, that one is. Sleeping Beauty. Okay. So now one would go around and just, I mean, there's I mean, you can add these. In. The main reason it's better is because I've never got this this side right. That being said, let me see here. I want to make just enough, like a little highlight on the ball that's there. Let me get these little chimes here. And uh, now what's going to happen is going to come off almost too much. White comes with the window and lights up the back of the dress. Uh, a nice highlight on this clock. There. What do you think? What time he's going to paint? He's going to paint eleven twenty-three. Yeah, that would be appropriate. Yeah. So if I was to finish this, finish this clock, I would just, I could just find little areas. Like I don't do too much. Let me see. Just, just a little bit here. It's very round here. Very lightly. <clears throat> I don't want to do more than the clock. Yeah. Like all the stuff that like here is facing the light. You see, I may lighten that up. So I got to 11 30, right? Yeah. Okay. 13 minutes. <laughs> That's a lot of time. I could, I could, I could mess this up in 13 minutes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Early on, you said something about wishing you had a different paper, and I didn't follow why. It's, is this one is buckling? It's kind of curving. Any other paper, and you wish you had what? I used my uh, 300 pound paper. Well, my 300 pound paper, I. A lot of times I don't use it uh, for the demonstrations and stuff because one is more expensive and I get it in the really big sheets yeah. and it's hard to, yeah. I, I, I really, it just, oh, it I could deal with it enough to, to not use my 300 pound for these demonstrations. Yes. And you're looking totally fine. Yeah, oh, it looks fine. It looks good. It looks perfectly good. Um, that's not a problem. I don't think it's really as much the paper as it is the the paint itself. 
just lends itself to coming off very easily. The Daniel Smith more than the whole body, or does it depend on the color? I haven't. Oh, the whole vine seemed to come up pretty easily yesterday. Yeah. So as I see, I'm going to put a little, a little wash here. I want her dress to come out, come out a little more like that. Now you can see that side a little better. Mm -hmm. Those are all decisions you make right towards the end of your painting. And then as, as you do, you can just pull off a little bit here, there. So now we're gonna need to do the other side. And here, to make that arm stand out a little bit, a little bit more. And that edge of her hair won't be as harsh there. Now you can see that arm better. Does that come out? Yeah, the shine on her arm. Yeah, definitely keep it on her arm. Yeah. I think I'm going to come down here. I was at, at this point, um, if I see on my painting, I could see these lines over here, my drawing, and they haven't been used yet. I, I was telling them I put a pencil line on there. If I put it on there, then it means it's kind of serve, needs to serve some purpose later on in the painting. So I didn't see it over here, and there is why it's a little bit of pattern over there. So do you try to get your lines off of your paintings after they dry? Or do you just leave them? Uh, yeah, I do in the in the light areas. Yeah. Like like for what I was just saying. Um, like here's a little bit of what I could have, what I would have done or could have done is just go over the whole dress and with my that blue color and this pulled it out. Can I ask, there's a, right at her waist, there's a horizontal line from her to the clock. It seemed to go right down across her waist. What is that? That darker line? Oh, it's just like a, like a cummerbund type. But that's around her. But but right. But beyond her, towards the clock. I think that's the molding in the wall. It's very observant of you. So on her, I'll just soften that so it doesn't go all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't wrap around her. Yeah. Thank you. We're all here to help. I, uh, <laughs> we're all going to sign the Little did I know that I had all these assistants. Yeah, leave a big area to get all signed. We'll have a show of hands whether it's A, B, C, or C plus or what, you know. Man, for the part I did was all yeah. A. Yeah, let's see here. Okay. You're going to have to tell me to stop, okay? Uh, you, got, you got a full seven minutes. Okay. Okay. So right over here, I'm going to take this flesh tone color, which is actually what I, it looks like in the picture. I'm just going to put a little bit over it. Just drop it in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now that this, this little spot looks a little too harsh there. Well, having done this several times, what do you like best about this iteration and what do you like least about this iteration? 
<laughs> and iteration. I'm not quite sure exactly what that is. You mean more time? This oh, this uh, why I keep doing it? No, no. But what what do you like best about this time you've done it, and what do you like least about this time oh. you've done it? Um, well, like I said, I, I wish I'd use a thicker paper. Yeah, I. Um, Oh, that's good. I, I, much, I like this side much better. I spent, spent much more time on that. I like the windows better. Yeah, this one's definitely better than the ones I did before. I wish I could show you the other ones. While, while I'm just kind of um, finishing it off, I'll tell you just a really quick story. This is a photograph of a friend of mine, a fellow artist. Um, she had asked me to give her some lessons, uh, Sylvia Rufo, oh, yeah. and, and she, uh, and then while we were doing, this is like maybe seven or eight years ago, and she went to Cuba on like a photo safari, you know, to take pictures of all these things, and she comes back, she excitedly called me, and she goes, oh, Ken, you gotta see these pictures I took, and she described them, and I told her, gosh, you know, I'm not even sure if I even want to look at them <laughs> because, because I knew that I'd be so jealous and I, and I couldn't paint them because I, you can't paint someone else's photographs. So he took them. But um, then I realized that, wait a second, I could do it in demonstrations, you know. So that's why I'm doing it in demonstrations. <laughs> if she gave you permission, why couldn't you? This is not my creative idea. Yeah. But that being said, she she gave me the creative idea, but the, I would have, have to make it my own. So, and I did. And I took I, my model that I've used before. I had her do a similar pose. I put her in similar things. I don't know if anybody's uh, um, my painting I had in the she didn't say yeah. Yeah. Say, is an extension. It, that a painting exists today because Sylvia called me 10 years ago and said, can you teach me art? Oh. And it, it was always just little things that changed and she showed me. So I can do this, but I had to make my own. So I did it. I ended up putting her in, uh, one painting was in like the Trinity College Library in Italy. And then, wow. and then the bigger one, I took all these photos. So I just said, I didn't know which one to paint, so I said, I'll just paint all of them. <laughs> and so how am I gonna do that? Well, there'll be soon. Well, why would she be doing that? And I, my first idea was to make her look like a ghost dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I thought, well, where would a ghost dance? <laughs> and then when I was in Italy, not Italy, I mean Ireland, I was at this place called Kong Abbey, and they had these like big tombstones from like 1200s. You know, all this stuff. And as soon as I saw it, I go, that's my background. Yeah. So that's how that painting came from. <laughs> so, anyways, I, I think this is done. Uh, the rest of it is just tiny details and stuff, but it's basically finished for now. Now, I haven't. Uh, looked at it from 20 feet, like, like you, you all. So you're going to see things that maybe uh, that I'll see later. And I go, oh my goodness, I, I should change that. Or do it. But that's what you do as an artist. You, you come back and you you look at it. You come back, let it sit for a couple of days. Uh, and the final judge for anything I ever do is I bring it down and I show my wife. <laughs> and if she'll either go like, <laughs> she never goes like this. But she has, and, and I, I value her opinion because she's the exact opposite of an artist. She's, according to her, not me, she has no artistic talent whatsoever. But what she does have is a, 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 a public eye. Yeah. Looks at because most people who go to the art galleries uh, are aren't artists themselves, mm -hmm. and they're just people who might buy something, and their opinion is very valuable. Mm -hmm. That's your your public. So, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you to our new clinic.